Good morning. Welcome to Marty's Fly Bench. This morning I'm tying Chan's Stillwater Pupa. It's become one of my favorite Stillwater flies. It represents the caddis pupa of the traveling sedge. That's the caddis you'll see running across the surface like a motorboat. These things are pretty good size. They can live up to a couple of years underwater so they can achieve some pretty good size. I'm tying this one on a size 12. You want to carry these in 10s, 12s, maybe a few 14s but when you get a chance to fish a bigger fly, why not? So, this one's a 12, it's a Dairiki 730, that's a 2x long hook. And I'm going to start off with some UTC thread, and the type of thread you use here is not very important. What I use is black for my unweighted version, and then I'll use an olive or some sort of green for versions with a few turns of lead on. Now I got some spandex, silly legs, sexy legs, life flex, whatever you got, and you want a, a green. You can go as bright as chartreuse or get a lime green, just something that contrasts a little bit with your dubbing. The dubbing I'm using is Arizona synthetic dubbing. This one's bronze peacock. And I tie these in kind of a dark synthetic peacock, this color, and then I've got a lighter one. And for today's demo, I'm just going to tie it with kind of the in-between color. If you only have one, you might as well kind of split the difference. Now I'm going to get some dubbing back to the bend of the hook and get a couple of turns behind the spandex. And then dub about to the middle, midway point on the hook. At this point, with modest tension, you should be able to get three, maybe four turns of the spandex. There's the back half. Now, for the wing case and the wings, we're going to use pheasant tail fibers. And I go ahead and try and pick six, maybe seven or eight, that gives me just the right density of legs when I fold them back. Now I'm going to set this up so that they extend a good hook length behind the bend of the hook. And when you get the hang of this, they'll be just the perfect length when you pull them back for the legs. But expect to practice on a couple. Now for the thorax, I'm going to use natural peacock. And I have some pretty pretty good peacock here, so I'm going to use two of them. One would do, but I find that by using two, if one of them happens to break when I'm wrapping, you can often just continue with one and fly looks just fine. Now I like to wrap my peacock from front to back because it lets me kind of creep up on the end wraps from the abdomen and makes it nice and seamless. And then I'm going to palmer through the peacock with my thread. And now if a fish's tooth does break that, it's not likely to unravel. Now I'm going to turn it upside down and put in some legs. The legs are a beard made of ice wing fibers, peacock green. And I'm going to get I don't know, six or seven. Stroke those back. Cut them just a little bit longer, just a little bit past the point of the hook. I'm going to come back up to upright and I'm going to pull the wing case over. And I just build up a little bit of a flat spot so I can pull the legs back and lash them to the sides. I'm going to try and peel, I'm going to try and peel three on each side. That's just about the right density.
And if you end up with too many on one side, you can always just trim one out. If your extra stick out the front like mine did, makes them relatively easy to get at. Now, for the head, I'm going to use the stubs from the same peacock I used for the abdomen. Build this up into a little bit of a fat ball head. And we're just about done. Now I've got Chan's Stillwater Pew Pup.